In polls on the eve of the UK election suggest that Prime Minister Theresa May will boost her majority opinion. Polls published on Wednesday showed that May is on course to increase her majority in Parliament in Britain's election today. Of the six polls published, two showed the Conservatives widening their lead over Labour, while two showed a narrowing stance and uh, two were unchanged. The polls were conducted after a deadly attack by Islamist militants in London on Saturday. However, at the other end of the spectrum, other polling firms said the Conservatives' lead stood just one percentage point, which called into question whether May would get a majority at all. But polling experts have said that the main difference between the polls suggests a tighter race is largely to be taking place and wary estimates of how many young voters who typically support Labour are likely to actually vote. And as Britain decides who will be its next Prime Minister, the parties are pushing hard to get every last vote. London's Bureau Chief Manny Clark takes a look at the main political players and the issues dominating the elections. It's the last day of campaigning and the candidates are giving it their all, crisscrossing the country, trying to win over the undecided. When Prime Minister Theresa May called the snap election in April, there was little doubt she would win a solid majority. We are living through an important moment. Brexit was the focus, and the election choice hinged on who could deliver a better deal for Britain. But over the last three weeks, her lead has lagged. Some analysts suggest there might be a hung parliament, and that could lead to a political deadlock just when formal Brexit talks begin. Opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn has done better than expected in surveys. He seems to have the youth vote with his promise to end university tuition fees. He's also seen as anti-establishment, and that has appeal with voters who are sick of the status quo. But Corbyn is a vocal pacifist and is also seen as not tough enough on terror. The recent terror attacks have coloured the national conversation now, and May's record as Home Secretary has come under scrutiny. She had drastically cut policing numbers while in that job. The latest opinion polls have cut the Conservative lead drastically. They still have Theresa May ahead of Jeremy Corbyn, from anywhere from 12 to just one point ahead. But the polls have famously got it wrong in the past, failing to predict the election of President Trump and not seeing that Britain would choose to Brexit. It seems that this election could be anyone's. Mary Clark, we on London. And in fact, we do have uh, London Bureau Chief Mandy Clark joining us on the broadcast today. Mandy, uh, it's a very early morning for you, and in fact, the British voters are now out to vote and elect their representative, in fact, in just another year. Um, what are we gathering from the voters as to who they really favour at the moment? Well, yes, uh, the, the polls have just opened at 7 o'clock uh, local time here. Um, what we're seeing is um, different parts of the population seeming to favor different groups. So the, as the youth vote, it certainly seems to be backing Jeremy Corbyn. But what we've seen in the past is that although they might be vocal on social media, they don't tend to go to the polls. So certainly we're going to be watching this time whether they will be heading to the polls. And if they do, that could certainly influence the outcome. Another big portion is the elderly, and they traditionally now vote um, conservative. Whether they continue that trend is yet to be seen. And the third group is, is the late uh, trade unionists. They have had a bit of a fractious relationship with Jeremy Corbyn, um, but once again, they have said they're going to back Labour. So those are the main groups that we're expecting to see out of the polls today. Also, Manny, we've seen uh, both the party Gillan leaders coming out with their manifestos and explaining what they can offer to their people. And certainly a different ideas here and given in the wake of terror attacks and what has happened to London and then Manchester, in fact. Um, where do you think the voters are thinking on those lines? Do you think the voters are, in fact, thinking on those lines right now on who to elect and who can actually, in fact, curb immigration for them or can control the terror menace? Uh, yes, I think it is going to weigh heavily on people's minds because it is so recent. Um, and that will be to the detriment of the Labour Party. Um, Jeremy Corbyn, 
uh, has uh, supported in the past uh, certain members of the IRA. That's the Irish Republican Army. It was um, a movement in Northern Ireland. Uh, who, but they were no, they were seen as terrorists in Britain. They certainly left bombs and killed people. To to have in the past supported groups um, goes against him. Also, he hasn't been very strong on terror. He is a vocal pacifist. He doesn't believe in a nuclear option. All those things make him seem weak in in the face of a, a terror threat. Uh, so that goes to the favor of the conservatives. And just before um, this vote, Theresa May has come out and said she's willing to essentially rip up the human rights laws if it stops police doing their job. So she's willing to relook at it uh, to give terrorists and terrorist suspects, suspects uh, less freedoms. Uh, and that will, that human rights campaigners may disagree with it, but it will certainly have um, uh, momentum with an electorate who do feel under threat by these terrorists. But don't you think the voters are distressed about the fact that she made so many cuts in uh, the police force? In fact, 20,000 jobs down. And earlier when she was the Home Secretary, she had to take some hard decisions. And uh, not that the people of Britain really don't know about this, but is that really playing against her? Because we know that she's taken a lot of U-turns, calling a snap election when she didn't want, when she said that she wouldn't, and then taking a U-turn on the social care. Have these things really played against her for so long? Because when she started the campaign, she was way ahead. And now the gap has narrowed so much. Yeah, um, and, and that's a really important point. When she was Home Secretary, she made those deep cuts to policing. Now they... Um, the conservatives are trying to spin it, saying they had they didn't cut, they cut some policing numbers, but they've increased the uh, counterterrorism budget. Um, but certainly, people aren't aren't looking at the nuances. They're looking at um, you know what has done. So it it has played against her. But what's to her favor is that the opposition party has been so weak on terror. So when the electorate, when the voter goes to the polls, they're deciding between two people who don't seem very strong. So it's kind of the best of the worst option is what I heard one of um, the voters say yesterday. I, you know, they, there's no one candidate they're passionate about. They're just, they're, there's one they l dislike more than the other. Right, Mandy, if we talk about Brexit, on which uh, Theresa May, in fact, planned her own campaign from day one to day end, but there's certain sort of criticism around that as well. She talks about hard Brexit, but doesn't really give details as to what she plans. And then talking about India, trade with India post-Brexit is also uh, sort of unclear. Not that the Labour Party has given out, uh, you know, full detail, but for Theresa May basing her campaign only on Brexit, this does look like a discrepancy for the voters, or, or do you think it hasn't played out at all? Well, that certainly that's what they wanted to do. They wanted it all to focus. The Conservative Party wanted this election to be all about Brexit because Jeremy is not seen as a strong negotiator, the, the opposition leader. However, because the, the national conversation has changed, certainly Brexit hasn't dominated this election. And you're right to, to point out that though she said she will be tough on Brexit, there hasn't been a very clear, um, concise details on exactly what her negotiating strategy will be. And she purposely has said in the past she doesn't want to share her negotiation strategy because it will weaken her hand when she's at the, the negotiating table. So it's, it's very unclear exactly what she what she's going to be asking for. And But at the same time, she's asking voters to back her. So it, it, it seems to have been a poorly planned out election strategy from the beginning. Well, I hope she uh, is able to dismiss the tax she's been given on social media as we can properly. And uh, let's just wait and watch on what uh, Britain, on who Britain, in fact, elects for their next government. Thank you, Mandy Clark, for joining us uh, from London and giving us all those details. We'll speak to you all throughout the day and understand and get more details.